Hello everyone, welcome back to Caitlin Bennett's Worst Nightmare, aka The Morgan Park Show. First off, I want to say Happy New Year. Feels like it's been forever since the Pilk video, and I'm really excited to be back on the main channel. Uh, so, what are we doing today? What are we doing for the start of season four? Or better yet, where are we? Well, today I'm here at the wonderful and never, ever once caught in controversy Kent State University. And today I'm here to do something extremely groundbreaking. Never done before on YouTube. I'm here to, I'm here to, I'm here to rank bathrooms. I'm here to rank bathrooms today. Go poop and pee. Let you know what the best one to do poop or pee in is. <laughs> yeah, get him in there. <laughs> Start with your window down on January. I have IBS, which means if the question is, do it be farting? The answer is yes. Yes, it do. Now, despite that fact, I can't force my body to produce feces on the spot. So I do have a water bottle in my bag to drink and hopefully pee. So while I might not be shitting in every single one of these bathrooms, I will at least try to be pissing. And I will let you know if I did number two, number one, or if I just looked around. Now, while I'm going around and ranking everything, I'll be recording all my findings and scores in this little book right here. And after we go around and rank everything, we'll go back to my house and I'll tell you how I scored these bathrooms as well as how they ranked against each other. Before we get into the video, please consider leaving a comment or subscribing if you're not already subscribed. It helps out a lot in the algorithm. And also a quick note, this is my first ever time filming a video outside. So if the audio isn't exactly up to snuff, I do appreciate your sympathies as this is our first time ever filming a video outside. We're here at Bowman Hall, named after George A. Bowman, who was president of the university from 1944 to 1966. And is also famous for the Bowman Boneman, a roughly seven foot tall skeletal creature who lurks in the vicinity at night. <laughs> now what the hell? Um, somebody left their glasses here. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're here at the business building, a building so depressing it made me change my major. Uh, in case you couldn't tell, if you're really stupid, the business building is home of the business majors, which basically means you're not smart enough for STEM, but you don't care enough to go into the humanities. I can make that joke, I'm still an advertising major. Now we're gonna go rank the bathroom. So first off, we are walking by here. I've actually never used this entrance of the business building before. I always went around back, but first off, Sigma grind set and you know who's part of the Sigma grind set yo Patrick Stewart's a Sigma Sigma Captain Picard Patrick Stewart holy shit <laughs> While we're here, let's talk business a week from the release of this video if everything goes according to plan January 27th Sharkfish is sh Sharkfish is releasing a three song EP titled three breeze the musical which is a musical parody of our friend Mikey Mayo song. So uh, if you're watching before January 27th, hit the pre-save link down below in the description. If you're watching after January 27th, go look up Sharkfish on any major streaming service. at the moment because while we're driving there's a horde of high schoolers there's crossing. There's a horde! There's a lot of high schoolers crossing the street and, and we can't drive forward at the moment Merrill. on our way to Merrill. We are here at Merrill Hall, home to both sociology and criminology majors and we have a sociology uh, graduate behind the camera right now. Everyone, Monty just graduated last semester with a degree in psychology and sociology. So everyone comment down below. Congratulations on your graduation, Monty. Uh, now let's go piss because I really got to piss this time. Jeez, what a, what's a person got to do to get some brain around here? 
please, please subscribe. Now we're here at Nixon Hall, home of the culinary students as well as nutrition students. I actually had one nutrition class in here, um, but I think many people at Kent State will probably actually never have a class in this building due to how small it is and how narrow the class selection is. Uh, but since I've been in here, I wanted to show you all the bathroom of Nixon Hall. Montana reaction to the horrors of Nixon Hall. <laughs> We're here at the Student Center, the Center for for Students, and it's begun snowing more right as we started filming this bit, so that's awful. Thanks, Nolan, who recommended this one. This is a recommendation straight from Nolan, who was not only the inspiration for the Breaking Bad Fortnite video, My God, It's So Cold, but he was also in the audience for the Pilk video. Uh, so thanks a lot, Nolan. I blame you for the snow. I was told to rub his nose for good luck. Mm, he's so cute. So this will get a million views now. Thank you, sir. Helen's a good idea. People right there. Why would this happen to me right now? We're here at the Center for Undergraduate Excellence, the Q. Uh, so here we have things such as advising, everything for student success, and where I've spent countless hours in torture for intern training. Also, this bathroom was recommended by Monty. What could you tell us about your bathroom experiences here at the Q? I shitted here. Did, was it enjoyable? Oh, it was great. It was really good. There's no one in there ever. It's the perfect shitting experience. Okay, so this used to be a kitchen. It used to be a really cool restaurant. I probably shouldn't be back here. But yeah, it used to be really good and then they shut it down for no reason. Uh-oh, we have a switch up occurring. Wait, am I? Sorry, I just had to make sure I wasn't pulling the fire alarm by accident. I, I'm not, I was hitting the handicap button by accident. We have switch up occurring. <laughs> uh, yes, the next two bathrooms will not be reviewed by me, but by the very wonderful woman behind the camera, Montana. Um, so while I won't be reviewing these, she's gonna be following my same score system here. Uh, but let me tell you about these buildings first. Now we are at Smith Hall, which is the location of the physics majors. And fun fact, this location where Sheldon Cooper let out his very first ever bazinga. Come, come here! <laughs> now, this specific bathroom was recommended by our good friend Bryn. It supposedly has weird tables and chairs within the restroom, uh, but since I'm not going into the women's restroom with a camera, Monty will be reviewing this one for us and reporting back, verifying these claims, and letting us know how this bathroom ranks against our others. Just dropped the camera bag, but whatever. This bear is looking kinda scary. No butts, but they're kinda hairy. I've got a restaurant for pizza. I'm the now we're at the mathematical math math mathematical sciences building. How do you make a joke about a place so boring? You don't. Now this was recommended by Bryn's friend Alex, who says supposedly the women's restrooms in the math building only have curtains on the stalls instead of doors. So once again, Monty will be reviewing this one. I don't know. It seems like a pretty far-fetched claim to me, but Monty's going to be in investigatively reporting for us today.
All right, now we're at our final building of this section. After this, we'll be back home talking more in depth about the scoring system as well as how these bathrooms ranked against each other. Without further ado, the Integrated Sciences Building, or the ISB for short. Now, this recommendation once again comes from Bryn, a positive recommendation at that, but since it's the final leg of our journey, I'll be the one reviewing it instead of Montana. Now, Smith Hall, which we already visited, was part of a huge renovation project, which included multiple buildings on campus and was capped off by the construction of the ISB. And it was completed in 2017. And as such, being such a new building, I'm pretty sure the newest building we've visited today, it has, I have extremely high expectations for. So, let's go take a whiz. Manufacturer of ball bearings. We're now at Ying's Bubble Tea okay. after the reviews. Do you want to see how cute my wallet is? Yeah, it's showing. So cute. So cute. I got the um, sweet rose almond milk tea with tapioca pearls. I got the honeydew uh, almond, I think, tea with tapioca pearls. All right, I'm back at home now, and it's actually been uh, about a day and a half since we left the campus um, and finished scoring all those bathrooms. Uh, I really wanted time to digest everything that happened when we were there, uh, and also I edited most of what you just saw um, the, since then, so <laughs> it's been quite a grind to get this video out on time. So let's go over how we're actually calculating the scores for this bathrooms. What are we actually like ranking them based on? I have a list right here. I don't really like reading off of like a thing directly when I'm filming because I like looking at you guys, but bear with me for this because I don't really remember it off the top of my head. So we rated them on uh, four things, four things we ranked these bathrooms on. So the first thing we did was space. So um, how spacious was it? I think the Highest bonus you could get was plus two points, and the most deduction you could get if it was really cramped was minus two points. The next thing was it clean, and that was anywhere from one point to six points, one point being not very clean at all, and six points being this bathroom is very sparkly and very nice. Up next we have, was the bathroom stocked? So this would be, was the soap dispenser completely filled? Was there toilet paper in all the stalls? Was there paper towels? Was there a hand dryer? So everything was stocked for the most part when we went there, but I did take one point off for any bathrooms that didn't have paper towels because some, a couple bathrooms did have paper towels, but not all of them had paper towels. And me personally, you know, if you're really eco-friendly, I'm sorry to say this, but I prefer paper towels to hand dryers. So I, I took a point off. So if you don't care about paper towels, if you prefer hand dryers, your scores might look a little bit different, but I took off points for no paper towels because I fucks with paper towels. And then the final element which we scored these on was the vibes because, I don't know, I think vibes are like super important when you're in a bathroom. Like if you get bad vibes in a bathroom, how are you gonna be able to pull your pants down and poop? That Like that is such a vulnerable human experience. If a bathroom has bad vibes, that's that's really not good. So, and the vibes was a multiplier. It was a multi multiplicative factor. Um, so instead of it being plus or minus, all the other factors we just talked about were added up and then multiplied by the vibe score. So 
if it had really good vibes, I would be up to like 1.4 times the base score. And if it had really bad vibes, like the worst vibes possible, that would factor in and multiply their base score by 0.7. And obviously this goes without saying, but we did not even come close to visiting every bathroom on campus. And I, I do want to point out we were filming for about almost two hours yesterday we were on campus. Uh, literally just going from building to building. We walked almost everywhere except the last two buildings we recorded. Not the last two buildings that you watched, but the last two that we recorded we had to drive to because it was so cold outside. So yeah, we were just walking around campus for two hours. Um, I do think I want to do a part two to this video eventually, whether we just do, you know, 10 more bathrooms at Kent State University or we go somewhere else and rank bathroom. But this was super fun. I think maybe I would do this again in the summer at Kent State, so like walking around campus wouldn't be that bad. Alright, so I'm going to just start breaking some of these bathrooms down by the order that you saw them in the video, and then after that I will go through and tell you their final scores and how they placed. Um, so first up, what we visited was Bowman Hall. Bowman Hall, which by the way, I'm going to also tell you all the bathrooms I went to and what I did in them. So Bowman Hall, we went to the first floor men's room right when you go through the main entrance. And the bathroom had one toilet stall, two urinals, and a, and a hand dryer, soap dispenser, everything was stocked. Here's how I kind of felt when I went to Bowman's bathroom. It is just kind of the most like default bathroom that could exist, to be honest. Like there was nothing spectacularly bad or good about it, to be honest. Um, I gave it minus one point for space because it was a little small considering how much foot traffic is in Bowman. I believe the second floor bathroom is bigger to be fair, but this specific bathroom I feel like definitely needs a little bit more space considering how much foot traffic goes through Bowman and only one stall is always a negative in my opinion. So it got minus one point for space. A uh, pretty clean bathroom overall, not the most immaculate, but certainly not uh, disgusting by any means. I think a lot of these benefited from the fact that we're technically in between semesters. The new semester starts um, in a couple days. So, not a whole lot of foot traffic going on at this very moment, so a lot of them did pretty well on the clean cleanliness factor, but not all of them. Uh, up next on the list, we had the business building is what we went to. So, the business building, I went to the first floor gender neutral bathroom because I actually couldn't find, uh, I could I didn't find the men men's or women's restroom. Like the first bathroom we saw when we walked in was the gender neutral bathroom. Um, and to be fair, I just didn't know the business building layout and we didn't walk very far. Now, there were other buildings where I did have difficulty finding the bathroom and we walked far. But for the business building, we just kind of saw the gender neutral bathroom right when we walked in and decided that would be the one I would be testing out. The, that bathroom had really, really good vibes. It was very clean um, and it was a single person bathroom. Keep in mind, it was a single person bathroom. Uh, so very spacious for a single person bathroom. I'll put the footage up on screen right now so you can hopefully get kind of a feel for what it was like in there. Uh, but yeah, very nice, very chic. It felt very new, modern. I don't know how new the bathroom is or when's the last time they redid it, but pretty solid, pretty solid bathroom from the business building. Up next, we have Merrill Hall. Let me find that on my, on my sheet here. Merrill Hall, here's the thing. I, I could put the voice recording over this about because I recorded my thoughts on Merrill right after I went to it. Fairly clean, I think um, not quite as clean as Bowman Hall. A little bit dustier, a couple things on the floor, um, but nothing terrible. I also think they had construction going on in Merrill at that time. As you saw in the B-roll footage, um, there were like construction things on the floor outside the bathroom. So that, that probably was part of the reason why it wasn't the most cleanly it could be. As far as stocking goes, it had no paper towels and no hand dryer either. So this wasn't even just me being picky about I prefer paper towels. There wasn't a hand dryer in uh, Bow and sorry, excuse me. There wasn't a hand dryer in Merrill either. There was no hand dryer or paper towels, which you know that's that wasn't great. Um, but to be fair, I actually kind of enjoyed the vibes of the Merrill bathroom. It gave me the vibes of like an older mall with like how everything was like tiled every like all the tiles were like the same color except like some streaks of color here and there it had like the vibe of like a older like 80s mall almost because like the pastel coloring in there as well um definitely weird vibes in the Merrill bathroom but not bad ones a little bit better than okay nixon hall was fairly clean about as clean as Merrill hall i'd say but it did not have it was missing soap in the soap dispenser i believe uh, I'll have to double check that one, but it has minus two points for the stocking. I think it was missing both paper towels and the soap dispenser was empty, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, so yeah, also Nixon Hall was very cramped as well. It's a very cramped bathroom. It's technically not a single person bathroom, but it's about the same size as the single person bathroom at uh, the business building. So a very, very cramped bathroom. And I do understand that, like I said in the video, Nixon Hall gets the opposite of a lot of foot traffic, but still it's a very small bathroom, very uncomfortable, especially considering it's the first one you see when you walk through the entrance. So not great. And also for all of these bathrooms, I peed in them. I didn't poop in any bathroom. I'm sorry guys. I didn't have to poop yesterday. I didn't, I don't even know if I ate breakfast before leaving. So I, I do apologize for that. All I did was pee in all the bathrooms. Up next, we have the student center, uh, single person bathroom. This was on the second floor. Now here's the thing about the student center bathroom that I'm talking about right now. The student center is a very, very big location. And I don't even think that was the only single person bathroom on the second floor. So ranking one bathroom definitely isn't indicative of the entire student center as a whole, or even the second floor, to be honest. Uh, so this is just the score for the particular one I went into. Now, as far as cleanliness and space goes, it was really nice. Like it was a very clean bathroom, very sleek looking, very nice. Space wise, once again, same with the business building. It was very large for a single person bathroom. Love that. I love that happening. On the flip side, the vibes were so off there for two reasons. Um, one I wrote down and one I didn't write down, which I should have wrote down. One reason was, if you saw in the video, and I'll play this clip in a second, the lock on the door after I went in and locked it was buzzing so loud. I don't know if the lock was like damaged or malfunctioning or if that's supposed to happen. I have no idea, but the lock was buzzing so loud because it was all electronic. I hated that. And also the bathroom is like right across from multiple, like, I think they were either like classrooms or like meeting rooms, like event rooms, which is like not good vibes. Like you don't want to be pooping across from someone that's having a meeting. It just felt too close to the areas next to it for my personal taste. Up next we have the Q, which was Montana's recommendation. Uh, as far as cleanliness goes, it, that it was peak. I'm just gonna say it right now, as far as cleanliness goes, it got plus six points. It was peak cleanliness for the Q bathroom. As far as space goes, pretty solid on the space. Not, not huge, but certainly not small. I think it was a little bit above average as far as space goes. So we got a little bit of positivity there, but not a huge bump from space. This was another bathroom that was missing paper towels, unfortunately, so it got points dot there. The vibes were really, really good in the Q's bathroom. It was very, very sleek. There was no buzzing lock on the door or anything. I, I really enjoyed my time in there. It was in a very secluded place as well. So if there's no one in there and you gotta take a huge dump, and you know it's gonna be loud and stinky, you really don't have to worry about anyone hearing you or like passing by the door or anything. And th I loved that, that was really nice. Up next we have Smith Hall, which was one Monty reviewed. Um, so obviously Monty's not here right now, but I'll be talking about the score she gave this. Uh, she said it was extremely clean, a little bit cramped, but with decent vibes, not bad vibes, a little bit better than okay vibes, okay being neutral. So a little bit better than neutral vibes, slightly positive vibes in the Smith Hall bathroom. Then after that, we went to the mathematics building. Uh, another one that Montana said was very clean, neutral on space, uh, par for space. I got no positive points there, but it wasn't small. So no negatives there. As far as vibes went for the mathematics building, it was a little bit worse than neutral. So not a huge deduction on the vibes, but a little deduction on the vibes. And then finally, we have the Integrated Sciences Building, which was very nice. I, I'd never been in the Integrated Sciences Building. Like I said, I had high expectations for it. I think those were pretty sufficiently met. Here were the two negatives I had with the Integrated Sciences Building bathroom. One, if you're looking for a men's bathroom, like I was looking for a men's bathroom. I was looking for the first floor men's restroom at the Integrated Sciences Building. It was very very out of the way and difficult to find. 
Like, if you didn't know where it was ahead of time, you're going to fucking struggle to find it. I found two. I found two women's restrooms before I found one men's restroom, and I saw no gender-neutral or single-person bathrooms on that floor. Now, obviously, there's a whole other floor to the ISB, but I, I didn't go up there. And if you're passing by this building and you have to poop, you're not going to go searching on the second floor immediately. So I don't know. But as far as everything else goes outside of those two things, oh, it also was missing paper towels. <coughs> it's also missing paper towels. So it got points deducted there. But outside of those two things, I had absolutely zero complaints about the ISB bathroom. So now let's get into the actual rankings. Coming in at ninth place on our bathroom ranking, we have Nixon Hall scoring a grand total of 1.75 points for the first floor men's restroom. Coming in at eighth place, we have Merrill Hall with a whopping 2.75 points for the first floor men's restroom as well. And now we have a pretty big leap from eighth to seventh place. Here's where we have like the kind of cutoff where below seventh place, I would not recommend going to those bathrooms. And above seventh place, I would say, sure, go to the bathrooms if you have to. And in seventh place, we have Bowman Hall, first floor men's restroom with five points. In sixth place, we have the Mathematics Building, scoring 5.4 points for their first floor women's restroom. Now, despite the good recommendations, this one only came in at fifth place for the Student Center, second floor gender neutral restroom, only scoring 5.6 points, just barely beating out the Mathematical Sciences building. Now, we're into the top four bathrooms that I visited at Kent State University. Coming in at number four, we have the Smith Hall second floor women's restroom at a very solid six points. In third place, we have the business building for their first floor gender neutral bathroom scoring a very solid 8.45 points. And coming in at second place, we have the Center for Undergraduate Excellence scoring a whopping 8.7 points. Coming in second place for their first floor men's restroom, we have the Center for Undergraduate Excellence scoring a very, very solid 8.7 points. And in first place, if you couldn't infer at this point, we have the Integrated Sciences Building for their first floor men's restroom scoring an amazing 9.06 points. So, we've definitely learned at this point that not all bathrooms are created equal. We have all the way down from Nixon at 1.75 points to the ISB at 9.06 points, and the ISB wasn't even perfect. It still had things that I found wrong with the men's restroom there. Uh, but despite that, it really made up for it in space, cleanliness, and size. Oh wait, I already said size. Space, cleanliness, and vibes. So, I'm listing all the final rankings on the screen right now. If you really want to see in depth how I scored these, the exact points that each of them got, I will link a Google Sheets document down below so you can see the exact specifics I did for each bathroom. This was this was really fun. This was a very, very fun video to film. I had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun editing all that outside footage so far. I, I definitely do want to do a part two um, for this. Hopefully this does well in the algorithm and you guys do like comment and subscribe so i have a little bit more incentive and a little bit more assurance that this is good for the channel because i had a lot of fun doing it i love to do something like this again even if this doesn't do well i definitely want to do some more content outdoors get outside touch a little bit of grass um but maybe not until it gets warmer out i will say that maybe no more grass touching until it gets warm out um but other than that i mean if you have made it this far I do wholeheartedly appreciate you. It, it means a lot. I'm glad to be back posting on the main channel. I've been practicing a lot with my editing and stuff in the little short break we took on this channel. And I'm super, super duper excited for what's to come this season of the Morgan Park Show. Um, after this, I'd love if you stayed and watched the credits because I have all the artists who kindly donated their music to this video. Um, so you can see all of their artist names as well as the names of their songs and the timestamps at exactly where they're at. And once again, please subscribe and go pre-save down in the description. Three Breeze the Musical by Sharkfish.